And again, I'm not having a go at anyone, but you know, you've heard the same song over and over again. The Rastafarians will sing about Ja, Ja. You, you can hear a million songs about Ja. I love the music, but is it facts you're singing? Let's break it down. Ja, there's no J's in Hebrews. Who is this Ja? That ties into Jehovah or going back to the Yah with the Y instead of the J will be Yah, Yahua or Yahweh. And who is this character? When you go into the details, you find out that the millions of songs have been sung are just like giving time and energy into this entity. It's the same with the extraterrestrial. When people find out that the biblical accounts of God and these, these entities, is they're camouflaging. Greetings, family. Um, that's Rahubat Muesar, and welcome to episode 8 of Ask Us Anything on OSM Vision. Remember the rules are very simple. Like, comment on your question so that it gets moved to the top. The questions with the highest likes are the ones that we address first. We do try to answer all the questions or as many questions as we can in the allotted time. But to push your question to the top, like, comment on it. But don't forget to subscribe so that you can get alerted with all the latest content. All right, so I'm Saken, a student of the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York who has enabled us to be able to be of service to the community by putting out so much information for us all to, to, to digest and then share that with the rest of the world. And that's what we do here on OSM Vision with these episodes. The best advice I can give anyone who wants to develop spiritually, who wants to basically learn as much as they can to help them is to read as many books as you can get your hands on by the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z.K. York, or go on YouTube and listen to as many of his recordings as possible. Basically, anything he's ever published, if you can get your hands on it, do so and so that you make your own mind up for yourself because the information is very profound. Um, it's the information for this day and time. And just to give you a, a, a quick summary of what Wu Sabat is, because the teachings and the answers that you're getting are based on the teachings of Wu Sabat. And Wu Sabat is our culture. It's a culture that was here since the beginning of time and predates all other religions and so forth. People ask questions such as, why is it that when they go on YouTube and they hear some of the videos by Dr. York, that he's speaking Arabic or that, you know, he's quoting the Bible and quoting the Quran. That's because of being a master teacher, the way he taught us was to first submerge us into the information that we kept asking him questions about. So when he was trying to teach us and take us um, into Wu Sabat, people kept asking him questions from the Bible, from the Quran, from the religious books. So what he did was put away Wu Sabat in the sense of teaching us what we call the hereafter doctrine and answered every question that we could possibly have on the different religions. And then, even then, he was still embedding Wu Sabat, our culture of, you know, us as original African people into even when we were learning and going through the religious schools. So with each school, it was almost like once we graduated, we moved on to the next school and to the next school and to the next school. So he covered Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Egyptology, um, the Sumerian doctrine, as well as extraterrestrial doctrine and, you know, dealing with basically everything that we ask questions on. And that was up until the year 2000 when he 
had given 30 years from 1970 to the year 2000, 30 years of information covering everything we wanted to know. And most of these books then expired. He even put out, you know, the Holy Tablets, which is a book that literally covered everything in one book, um, as well as the degree books that he put out, the degree of Christism, the degree of Mosism, and the degree of Mohammedism, um, which completed those three major monotheistic religions. And then he decided, okay, now I'm going to start to give you what I came to give you. And for those who know, um, his famous quote was always, I came giving you what you want so you will learn to want what I have to give. Unfortunately, um, a lot of people did leave um, before he started to give us Wu Sabat in its most pristine um, format, which is what it, you know we're using today. And that covers the Partarax or Partaruk, covers the actual facts, and it covers the master secrets. But in addition to that, there are you know hundreds of books covering all the other subjects um, to do with religion and so on. So without further ado, there is no time like the present. Um, and yes, use this opportunity to ask your question. Remember to subscribe to keep up to date. All right, let's get to the questions. Question one, Valerie8548. I've never have gained so much knowledge in my 62 years in this matrix that we're living in. Since I've started watching you now for a few weeks and have so much more learn. I have so much more to learn, I think that's supposed to say. I thank you for sharing so much knowledge to the masses. I pray that you continue to bless, to be blessed to continue, giving the most high thanks. We really appreciate your comment and this is the power of Wu Sabat. There is nothing, there is nothing out there that actually compares to Wu Sabat. Not that we're in a competition, but this is the type of effect. Even if you've only read one book, the master teacher advises us to go out and share that information, share that good news. So yes, we are very pleased that we're reaching people that, you know, to hear that someone has not learned as much in 62 years as they have in a few weeks of watching our videos is phenomenal and fantastic. Thank you. Um, although it wasn't a question, we still appreciate it. Can you explain the role of Haiti, and, Haiti in humanity's growth and explain how Haitian voodoo works, which is a mix of African and American native spirituality? The entities they use, who are these entities? Where are they from? How does the concept of offering works explain the concept of lightning, lightning candles to interact with them? Thank you, love. Um, who's this? Aye Bobo8577. I explained last week about how to ask questions. This is covering so much different areas and so much grounds. And... Um, it's very broad. Um, let me see if I can try and make some sense out of it. Um, the role of Haiti in, in humanity's growth. Obviously, um, Haiti is a place um, where what I can recall, um, Mark Damas is speaking about, I mean, it's so broad, but the Haiti, you've got different types of Negroids or Nogarus, right? And um, in terms of how it relates to America anyway, um, the, the Americans that have been in America for a long time, those that were, you know, grown and born or brought up in America have a different mindset, especially going through like the, um, what they call civil rights. Um, and over time, these 
American um, Negroids have learned and have realised that, you know, the racism and so forth with the struggles through, through um, as I said, the civil rights. And the Haitians are like a new type of Negroid, meaning that the American slave was actually produced and where a lot of African started to wake up in America, they don't have that slave mentality anymore. So people are starting to stand up for themselves and, you know, become entrepreneurs and very wealthy and so on. So in a way, the Haitians, um, Haitians were like people, new Negroes that they're trying to grow to replace the old ones. But in terms of, um, you know, so they were more like, it's like, it's like, if you can't get a particular Negro to do something or still have that same mentality that you could control quite easily, it's kind of, it's kind of easier to bring someone else in who does, who still has that mentality. Um, it's like, you know, when people just arrive from Africa from the first time to the, to the West or to America, they think life is great over here and they will work for less money. A bit like what's going on with the Mexicans right now in America where they're coming in, they have skills, they, they, got, they can work and so um, they will be easily exploited. In that regard, the Haitians are like the new Negroes, new, new, Negroes, if I can use that term. Um, but in terms of the other stuff you're asking about voodoo, I touched on this the last time. Um, the, the topic of voodoo and, you know, black magic and things like that is very broad. Um, a lot of it does tie into um, possessions, um, but I don't want to, like, just... just speak broadly because as I said the question is very there's African spirituality which a lot of it ties into influences from religion and this is why we're saying that the best thing to do is really focus on Wu Sabat as much as possible which will answer a lot of the questions that um, you know people are confused about um, I don't know which entities you're referring to because again as I said it's, it's very broad where they're from, how does the concept of offering works? Um, I, don't, I don't know what you mean about concept of lightning candles. Et Please rephrase your question in the next episode or make it very clear and more succinct if you can. So I'm going to move on. I hope I gave you something, but um, that, that was not really a very clear question. Um, I feel at home with most of the teachings of Wusabat. I need to get some of your books. Okay, that's fantastic to hear, um, Chris Dyke, 9205. The books are available on our website, um, nashat.co.uk, N-A-S-H-A-T.co.uk. Just search at the top for any of the titles or just browse through and add them to your basket and then you can get any of the scrolls we have available. Um, if, you, if you can't find something on our website, then use our official United Sabians Worldwide.com website. Both of these are in the comments. The links are in the comments. So yes, that's how you can get the books um, online. Question. In one of your earlier episodes, you mentioned about disagreeable spirits tormenting souls after tr transforming from physical to spiritual. Kindly share what needs to be done so that one doesn't get distracted or tormented by disagreeable spirits. Okay, so what I was explaining by way of what we've been taught by the master teacher, Panda Babianun, Dr. Malachi Z. York, is that, you know, there are different abodes or different realms that we elevate and progress through. Um, so we, this is like the lowest vibration in terms of the material plane or the physical realm. Um, and this is governed a lot by carnal desires, by material things, by the things that your body needs. Um, and so what happens is that a lot of times people forget and just focus mainly on the physical and, and neglect the spiritual aspect. Or they are tricked in terms of following a religion that 
has been designed to entrap you um, in terms of what you're doing is channeling your energy towards the, the beings that are pushed in these religions or the images that are pushed or the practices that you know, you're asked to, to do from the time you're so-called born again, where you're being dipped in water, some type of baptism, um, and then from that moment on, you're now providing a service or giving your allegiance or your energy to the beings of these monotheistic religions. And so you don't take the time to learn and practice your way of life, which is Wu Sabat, the real way of life that will help you like progress in terms of your different levels of existence. So if when you're crossing over, if you haven't made the grade, you will be stuck in a particular realm in a limbo state, or you will come back down to master and progress to the next level. So if you imagine a nine story building, you're on level one, which is the physical realm. You have to master this to move on to the next and then to the next until nine. Now you may get to, you may master the physical and get to the next one, let's say the spiritual, and you haven't mastered that. So you come back to that until you, you know, you elevate and pass that. And so your ancestors that may be trapped on a particular realm and may be tortured or held captive by these disagreeable entities on those realms, much like on the physical realm, we have a way of life and a way we should live in terms of what we eat, what we think, what we wear, um, everything from how we breathe, how we walk, how we sleep, what we put into our body, um, the things that we feed our other counterparts, like the spiritual part of you, you know, so that would deal with like your fasting, your meditation, your relaxation, your concentration. Um, there are many aspects to your being. And so, much like on the physical world, if you don't follow certain ways, don't treat people a certain way, then you may, for example, end up with the wrong company, um, maybe eating bad foods, taking drugs, alcohol, crack, cocaine, whatever, which will bring hell to your life. You might end up in a, a, a life of crime. You might end up being arrested and being imprisoned. And so you have things that you can do that will make your life hell, hell on earth. And things that you can do that will make sure that your life is in accordance with natural nature and smooth. Now, if you were doing the wrong things and you got incarcerated or imprisoned, it may be wrongfully, but whatever way you ended up there will mean that you're now captive and your loved ones would have to fight for you. Uh, maybe get lawyers and, you know, fight your case and make sure they visit you unt until you're able to be released, you know. And I'm saying, think about that same scenario, but on another realm, in a spiritual realm, where it's the similar things, where your ancestors that may have done the wrong things in terms of not learning the things they need to be able to move on. So, for example, um, the lower realms, you may desire things in the physical world that trap you or um, instead of you moving on, these things are holding you back. It's the same on the other realm. So in terms of what you can do, what you need to do is live Wu Sabat um, so that not only will you not get trapped, so you'll be able to answer the right questions because you ask certain questions in, in, your, in your elevation or in your travels forward. Um, and if you don't know the answers, then you won't make it. Or if you haven't burnt out certain desires, mastered certain things um, and it's quite simple really it's the things like learning how to to love you know divine love a shook uh, cooperating with nature 
feeding your body, you know, the, the most healthy, nutrition, nutritious food. Um, like I said, learning how to deal with people and things on the planet. Um, I'm, try I'm trying to think, but yeah, basically Wu Sabat gives you the answer to what you should do and what you shouldn't do. The way is called Pataruk, right? That's the way you should live. And it literally covers every single aspect of life in terms of how you interact with other people, what you do for your well-being, what you do to avoid um, the distractions, what you do to avoid entities that are messing with you, frequencies that are coming at you. It covers your mind, your physical body, your spiritual body, your etheric being. So the best answer is read and study and practice also about the language that we speak, the tones. You know, all of these things are designed for your well-being. And so if your ancestors are trapped, they're helping you and guiding you through you communicating with them um, to help you to come and help them. And so you can help them on the other side. And then when you cross over, you become an ancestor on the other side who can help somebody that is still on the physical. So it's all related. Everything is related from what you do now to your offspring and so on and so on and that's going forward and going backwards to where you come from, from your parents and so on. This is why it is important to break the spell, the spell of religion, the spell of religion that traps you in terms of, you know, what you do. Um, I hope that's answered the question. Yeah, so read the scrolls and, and put them into practice. Much gratitude to all um, the master teachers, big master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z, York, awesome, York. Again, that's not a question, but yes, we always have to give reverence and our appreciation to the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z, York, because without him, you know, Wu Sabat wouldn't be as, um, you know, prevalent as it is. And we, we give thanks and we give thanks to our ancestors who also chose him you know, the forces of nature that chose him to be, you know, the conveyor of this information in this day and time, the renewer, the guide for us in this day and time. Um, keep moving. What was your life like before Wu Sabat and who introduced you to Wu Sabat and the master teacher? Um, my life, much like most people, um, grew, growing up in the West, um, yeah, you get introduced to, you know, the schooling system from the nursery, um, secondary school, all the way. And then obviously, if your parents are in a religion, um, I explained on our first um, OSM, vis vis OSM Vision video, bit of a tongue twister. Um, go back and watch that. God, Numbers and the Universe Explained. I explained how I came into Wu Sabat, but I'll um, do it again for your benefit. Um, yeah, I just had always, as a child, I always had questions, you know, just thinking about things. Well, why does this happen? Why does that happen? How did this come about? And obviously, um, you ask your parents and if they can't give you the answers, um, and they were from a Christian background, so go to church, they can't answer your questions, school can't answer the questions, um, and you just go through life. You start to speak to your friends and peers um, and you reason and different people come from different walks of life. So you might be exposed to, you know, a friend of yours might be into Islam and they might give you their perspective and so on. And so for me, um, I used to always ask questions and um, I came across, yeah, I was, I think my, my brother had a, a, a book or a tape. I can't remember which one came first, but I do remember listening to a, a recording um, and at the time I didn't know who it was, but I remember it stopped me in my tracks and, it, and I later on found out it was Dr. York. Um, he was explaining um, and teaching on a tape. I can't remember the name of it, but he, he was, what I loved it was that he was going from the scriptures quotes the different languages going into Arabic, going into, you know, 
Greek, um, Hebrew. He was just explaining things very clearly, but it was the tone. Um, I was I actually remember what I was on a computer working and I literally went from my computer and I, I was listening and I was like, I stopped and I was like, and I listened even more keenly. And I remember the statement I made to myself was, now there's one person on this planet that knows what they're talking about. That was the first thing I said that goes, now there is one person on this planet that knows what they're talking about. But I didn't know who he was and I just carried on my life. And then I think my brother gave me a book, which one of his friends had given to him. And the first book I ever read, it was, it was called The Book of Names. It was one of those books that um, he, Dr. York, worked on it on himself. He literally used a typewriter and he typed it, binded it, everything. And it was the first, it's a, it's a white cover with black writing, it's called The Book of Names. That was my first book. And I read that book and it just blew me in my mind. And um, it was explaining about the original African people, who we are and you know, how we got into the West. It explained about slavery. It went into the importance of names. Um, yeah, it was just so profound. And then I think I put that away um, and just carried on with my life. I'm giving you a whole <laughs> story now, but um, I, won't, I won't make it too long. Um, and then um, I ended up somehow, that's right, I was, I'm a musician, I was in a recording studio and um, I had met somebody else that was a Muslim, but they were um, following the, the school of Ansar at the time. I had been, because I didn't really know who Dr. York was, I thought it was Farrakhan Khan for, for a minute when, because that was the only, because he was explaining a lot of the Arabic and the Quran and things like that. The only kind of black person I knew that was doing so, something similar was Farrakhan. So I just assumed it was Farrakhan. And then I kind of got introduced to Sunni Islam. Um, but I didn't know there was a difference. And then when I was in the studio working um, with my, one of my, my friends who was, we, we had a production company and we had an artist that was in the studio. And after the session, we went to his place and then I recognized that there were different sides to Islam. Like there was a Sunni side and then what I was now being introduced to as the Ansar Allah uh, community at the time. And we had a discussion after we had a meal and you know, you had the Sunni Muslim on one side and then you had the an an Ansar on the other side. Um, a brother called Kida, um, and then I, I just listened and watched the conversation and how the Ansar doctrine was so superior to the, to the Sunni doctrine at the time. And then I started to, to go to classes. I think I've, I've mentioned this before. Um, and then, yeah, just started ask, on asking my questions to the teachers and they could answer everything I was. And I was just like, wow. So then I started to buy the books, um, free will offering. Um, and I just started to read, 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 and haven't stopped ever since. And so I hope that's helped you in terms of, yeah, so to how I was, like everybody else, um, I was on, on the streets, on the road, doing what young men do. Um, yeah, drinking, smoking, going to parties, sound systems, all of that. And Wusabat transformed me, like wrong company, uh, most of the people I I moved with were all like, ended up in mental hospitals, in jail or dead. Um, but Wu Sabat literally completely changed me in terms of how I started to live my life um, and haven't stopped ever since. So I hope that's helped you to answer how I was introduced to Wu Sabat and the master teacher. And none of us um, can if, even try to say we can repay him for what he has done for our lives um, and just speak to different people that have come across Wusabat and how it has transformed and changed their lives and you will see that for yourself. Um, was not expecting a video this week but glad to see one posted. Appreciate all you do and mean stand for. 
If anyone is having trouble purchasing books, try using a laptop or computer, not your phone. Um, website pulled up fine after I stopped trying to use my phone as well as I could order from different locations. Why do? Yeah, um, the, the thing with um, devices is that there are so many different devices. You know, you've got um, Apple, you've got Android, you've got different operating systems, different versions. Um, it's quite important and different countries, um, you know, people might have different devices that are older in different countries. So it's hard to know exactly what issue you may be having on your device. Um, but the, the website is um, responsive. For those who don't know what that means, it means that you should be able to have a, a good experience on, on the latest devices or on your Android, Apple um, tablets. Um, yeah, so if you do have an issue, the, yeah, the desktop is probably better, um, but you should be able to order on your phone as well. So yeah, um, thank you for um, openly opinionated 6840 for that comment. Um, yeah, so try, try different devices um, and see if, if it works, but the desktop should be your number one okay um again there isn't a question but i'm um, happy to hear that my name is mo i'm from zimbabwe just wondering if you have heard about aliens that landed in zim like 20 years ago even joe rogan spoke about it are we being misled by lies or they are trying to put fear i think that's fear into minds and control us I'm also a an musician and I want to sing about our people, what can inspire me. Again, please ask questions in a simple way so that we can direct it, but um, I will still try and answer your question. Um, yeah, the aliens, um, or more, more appropriately, extraterrestrials, can't get my words out today, extraterrestrials, um, seen all over the world landing in different places and i saw there's a documentary on netflix actually that spoke about the zimbabwe one and yeah that was according to the documentary if it's the same one you're referring to it was real because you had many people that gave their accounts um and the thing about the whole extraterrestrial thing um is that when something is happening globally worldwide from different places, different races, different cultures, different people that have recorded the incidents happening. It makes it harder for the people, like the governments and so on in the West, to try and keep a lid on it and try and act like this is not happening. Because what is the likelihood of people who can't even speak English, different people all around the world having these experiences? So we know for a fact that the, area, the alien um, phenomena is real um, and just do your research but yes um, there are also hoax and people because remember that in order to throw people off where you have a system where people are trying to control people and control the narrative and control your mind and control what you think if you uh, someone who's doing that, when the truth is out, you have to put misinformation. You have to introduce an element of confusion so that, you know, people get confused, don't know what is right or wrong. So you do have a lot of hoax, you know, just like the, the flat earth um, thing, you know, like that's introduced to confuse people. And you have a whole following on people who will say, you know, then you have arguments and competition and people start to waste time and energy on things that don't even make sense. And you have a puppet master that is pulling the strings. You know, it's like people will argue about the Bible and the Quran and Jesus and certain books. And it's like, don't you realize that the minute you are engaging in a book that you haven't even proven to be authentic or even in a character that you haven't proven to have existed, then you're wasting time because first thing is to prove it exists before you start arguing about it. It's like, you know, someone will say, 
does Mickey Mouse exist? In one sense, someone's going to say yes, because you see the cartoon and you see the comics or you see t-shirts and things that have been produced with a character called Mickey Mouse. Now, if you go back, you know, back in terms of time and years, you will see that that Mickey Mouse character has evolved in terms of the way it was first drawn and it's brought up to date and kept up to date. You can do that with Iron Man. You can do that with any character or any fictitious character that, yes, it exists in the terms of is from somebody's, the figment of somebody's imagination. They created that character and now they've given it life because over time it will move from just being a drawing to being animated, to being in cartoons, to having a voice and having products that are associated with that character. So now, if you're a child and you've grown up knowing that there's a cartoon called Mickey Mouse and you see this cartoon, this character moving, talking, speaking, having adventures, it could be, it could be Barbie, it could be anything, right? You, you think that's real and we can go through Jesus, Muhammad, Father Christmas, Superman, the list goes on and on and on. Now, you can grow up into an adult thinking that Father Christmas exists, not knowing it's a story. And with the story, whoever is the author of that story or the person that drew that character, they can create a whole story like, you know, um, Father Christmas lives in the, in the North Pole, he has reindeers, he has elves and people that work with him, theories, um, it goes on and on and on. And it, 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 then they make blockbuster movies with now the technology, with the animation, with the CGI, it's so real that it's possible for you to believe something that was a story. So yes, um, the question is, is that, you know, they will make fake things and make them real by way of the media, but doesn't make them actually real. So they will always introduce the fake side to throw people off from the real. This is why in our videos, we always explain that there's the real, the scene, and there's the unseen, and there is the, um, you know, like people just accepting things with that facts without question, without research, but when you start to put them to the test, that's how you're going to know. You know, you have to, you, you have to look at, okay, there are real crafts, but then there are crafts that are man-made, but there are crafts that are not man-made. But if we put it out there, flying saucers, using aerodynamics, um, hoax people are going to make videos if they use technology now and then make videos pretending to show you know the falseness of the reality so this is why you have to be able to discern what's real from what's real remember in the bible in in, in genesis that was the first thing when their eyes were open adam and eve to know good from evil to know truth from falsehood to be able to discern what's right and what's wrong. And that's what Wu Sabat does, it helps you to do that. And if you're still confused and still not able to know what's real from what's not real, then you have to do some work. You have to do some work, do some research, speak to people, check out the evidence, and then you will come to your own conclusion. Okay. You are indeed a master teacher. I'm becoming a wise scientist. Um, Oh, sorry, I didn't answer the second part of that other question. Um, I'm also a musician and I want to sing. Yeah, I mean, um, we do need new songs um, to be sung about the truth because for years you have people that have been singing, and again, I'm not having a go at anyone, but you know, you've heard the same song over and over again. You know, um, you know like the Rastafarians will sing about Ja, Ja. You, you can hear a million songs about Ja. Um, or Haley Selassie, for example. Now, if you stop and say, I love the music, I like the drums and the bass and the musicians and the singers, but 
Is it facts you're singing? Let's break it down. Jah. There's no J's in Hebrews. Who is this Jah? That ties into Jehovah or going back to the Yah with the Y instead of the J will be Yah, Yahua or Yahweh. And who is this character? When you go into the details, you find out that the millions of songs have been sung are just like giving time and energy into this entity. And you have to stop that. You know, it's the same with the extraterrestrial. When people find out that the biblical accounts of God and these, these entities is they're camouflaging, that they're the one God and all of that. So you have to then go, we need to rewrite the books. We need to rewrite the history books. And so I'm saying that to say in terms of music and being a musician that we do need to replace the songs. Like people will listen to someone like Ailey Selassie and yes, he was an emperor of Ethiopia, but he's not king of kings and you know, the Lion of Judah and all these other things, all this sensationalism that is created around him when he's not what people have made him out to be. And he wasn't a real activist in the sense of revolution. Like, yes, he fought to get, because he obviously was an emperor, um, you know, he had to fight a few, you know, wars here and there, but not on the level of like someone like the Mahdi the real Mahdi of, of Sudan, of, you know. So what I'm basically saying is you have all these musicians singing about someone, and it's not just Haile Selassie and Ja and the Rastafarians and movement, it's, it's Christianity. You have all these gospel singers singing Jesus, Jesus this, Jesus that. And gospel is good music, we love it. It's, not, it's the, the artistry, the creativity from, you know, the artist, the musician the vibe, the tones, we love that. But then when we start to break down what you're singing and what you're giving that energy to, we go back to the same beings. So you're just exalting and putting all that energy into these beings that are not really for you. And so what we're saying is, yes, we need new musicians to, to, to bring back our culture, to sing the songs and tell the truth. So the best advice is to get inspiration as you Put it, read the scrolls, get the knowledge. So when you're writing, you're writing from a point of factual information and you're writing from a point of, you know, changing the, the previous six ether narrative and forces and bringing them up to nine ether and learn our language and sing and write songs in our language. You know, we have a number of artists already doing that. Um, so yes, I hope that helps. Um, uh, yeah, you are indeed a master teacher. I'm becoming wise scientist. <laughs> I'm not the master teacher. I, I appreciate the, the comment, very, you know, um, heartfelt. But the master teachers, partner Bab Yanun, we are students and we do our best to convey and share what we've been taught as student teachers. Um, however, we're all scientists. Our ancestors are scientists and this is why um, this is why it's, a scientist deals with facts. They deal with research. They deal with, because as a scientist, you have to prove things. You can't just say, um, I'm a doctor, and then you, you put on a white coat and start cutting people. You can't, that's not how it works. You know, you have to study, you have to learn, you have to, you have to be put through a test um, to, to be qualified as a doctor before you start trying to treat people. And this is what we are. We're doctors of Wu Sabat in terms of we're administering the right information that will help you with your spiritual, with your physical, with your whole being, you know. So, yeah, um, and that's what a scientist does. You see, our ancestors are scientists. They built the pyramids. They did great things as scientists because it's not based on chance. It's based on actual, you know, mathematics. You know, it's based on when this happens, this will bring about this result and this result. So they'll have a hypothesis, they'll go about doing experiments to prove and bring out a favorable outcome. So yes, we're all scientists and that's, that's what it's about. Study, research, check things out. Could you explain the proper method of integrating one's shadow? 
as discussed in shadow work. Many European philosophers, including Carl Jung, have explored the concept of the shadow side of the unconscious mind, which includes repressed or denied aspects of oneself. How can one effectively approach this integration? Again, I have to keep emphasizing, please learn how to ask questions. Um, a lot of people use this term shadow work to deal with how they address their, their spirituality, how they heal, how they deal with traumas and things like that. And, you know, what they call magic. Really, Wu Sabat is the answer. Um, by studying, the, we have books called um, Black Magic, White Magic, um, Black is White, sorry, um, Black is Evil, White is Good. Um, we, we, on, we, we go into a lot of detail in the book, so the best thing to do is learn and study Wu Sabat. I'm going to continually say that, continuously say that, because shadow work is really applying the knowledge. And once you know correct information from wrong information, you know how to apply it properly. So... Um, philosophy is about, you said many European philosophies, many of the Europeans went to Egypt to study under the mystery schools. This is even Jesus went to Egypt and according to, remember when I use these terms, I'm talking according to the Bible, according to what they use, right? Moses was brought up in Egypt. Everybody went to Egypt because the mystery schools taught people what people call magic or alchemy, which is the ability to know how, when you're a scientist, you know how to mix and, and use, you know, metals and convert and make things from what they call alchemy, which became chemistry or kemet. The word kemet, chemistry, chem, all ties into being taught in ancient Egypt. And so you had the lesser, the lesser mysteries and then you had the higher mysteries where you were instructed and given information on on things that people are now calling you know that the, the, the greeks and the romans that went to egypt they started to philosophize or use philosophy and philosophy is really about just talking around things and speculating as opposed to science which deals with you know actual facts and that's why the hereafter doctrine is referred to as actual facts because it deals with actual factual information. Um, and also Partharat deals with the way, how we live, how we do things and what we do and what we don't do. The master secrets goes into extraterrestrial information and information that only the master teacher has, secrets that have been passed down to him to share with us and none not all of that is going to be publicly publicly available. So, yeah, to, to add, I mean, again, the question was, could you explain the proper method of integrating one's shadow as discussed in shadow work? There are different perspe perspectives when people talk about shadow work. Shadow work is really, in a nutshell, it's about have, regardless of what aspect of life, it's about having factual information, knowing what you're talking about, and working on yourself to address and eradicate misinformation and uh, the six ether forces that have been giving you the wrong outlook and the wrong information, all right? Um, love over violence endures, absolutely. And when we say love, like I keep emphasizing, there's always two aspects or duality, yeah? So you have love, L-O-V-E, but if you spell it going the other way, is evil, phonetically. Remember, the vowels are interchangeable, especially in Shemitic or what they call Semitic languages. So what they do, the trick, the tricknology, that's trick knowledge, right? Tricknology is like they say in the Bible as well that the devil will make evil fear seeming. So for every positive or good thing, they're gonna give you a negative or a bad thing. And it's down to you to be able to choose and discern which one 
you lean to. So I'm saying that to say love, in terms of divine love, which is unconditional love for everyone and everything, against evil, which is phonetically love spelled backwards, which deals with desires and carnal desires, deals with lust, deals with um, I love you because, there's a because, and a because is normally something to do with being selfish, what you get out of that person. So they will desecrate love and trick people to thinking that love is about Valentine's Day and giving out chocolates and, 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 and red roses and desires and they turn it and desecrate it into something completely different. Not to say you shouldn't show love as in divine love or more appropriately as the master teacher um, explained to us through a recording called um, the Ma'at um, where he explains that you have to learn to care again and that's where un unconditional love comes in because if, because if you care about people, care about things, care about animals, care about nature, care about the planet, care about the water, care about all the things that bring us together and unite us in divine love, that's better than to love in the sense of, we have a, uh, a part of that called the three loves, which goes into explaining, you know, in more detail about love. So try and get hold of that if you haven't had that before. All right. But yes, love will definitely endure over violence. Um, that was flowing positivity 444. I'm so thankful you put these videos out and it comes at the perfect time. Again, thank you. Another good comment, another good feedback. Um, we do welcome the feedback, but don't miss the opportunity of asking your questions. Of asking your questions so that we can all elevate mentally um, because the questions help us all learn and they help us to move higher in terms of our consciousness. So please don't waste the time, ask questions. Um, in my studies from Dr. Malachi York and Dr. Delbert Blair, you begin to firm a different, I think that's meant to be form a different perspective. Of course, there are others. Do you know that we will upgrade in this circular age of Aquarius? Um, that's the whole point of this knowledge, like, We've reached a time where we, as a species, as many species on the planet, but in terms of there's a, there's a shift taking place. Uh, many know it as the dimensional shift. Many know it, as you say, in terms of changing from the, um, the to changing to the, the Aquarian age or the age of Aquarius, from the moon cycle to the sun cycle. And all of this is the planet itself also shifting right, to a different dimension, and intellect. So we, we, for those who are exercising their mental, you're also elevating and shifting consciousness. And unfortunately, just like an upgrade, right, let's take it to a very simple example. Most people have a smartphone now. The smartphone is something that's programmable, so you can now download apps the apps or the applications that you utilize on the phone can help you do all sorts of things, right? But if you go back to phones prior to smartphones, you can't actually download apps. So now everybody just takes it for granted and they're like, oh, yeah, you can just download the app. I know an app that can do this. I know an app that can do that. So it means that you've upgraded your phone. And even with that, they, they, even with the phones, there's like iPhone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the operating systems are also upgraded because you need the hardware, can't do much without the software. The software then help you to run the different applications. So if you don't upgrade, you're remaining and possibly becoming obsolete just like the old brick phones and the phones and little phones that didn't have the ability to be programmed. So all they can do is receive calls 
which is fine because really if it's about just making a phone call and receiving a call, then that phone can still serve its purpose. But when we're living in a day and time where you want to do sat navigation, you're, you're lost, you're somewhere, you've got a device that can help people find you or you can find your way from one destination to another. You can do your banking, you can do um, you know, all kinds of stuff on the device. So if you don't upgrade, you get left behind. It's the same with you because you are also a holographic computer and your brain with your mind is the central processing unit that you have to put information in to be able to do things, more advanced things. So yes, you're right. This is the cycle where we're supposed to be elevating and upgrading. And that's why Parnabab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Ziyuk is here in this day and time with all this information that he's putting out to upgrade you so that you're not stuck in the books of religion that never change. The same information that's been regurgitated week in, week out for hundreds of years, you know, or you're, you're stuck um, in, a, in a zone where you're not, you're not able to elevate, you know. So, yes, you're right. This is a cycle. It's called the sun cycle, the Aquarian age, and it's time for us to upgrade. And this is why, you know, people like Terence Howard, Bill Carson, um, even Cat Williams to a certain degree, people that are talking about these things that you have to let go of the old ways. They're dead. They, they actually been becoming obsolete and you don't want to be left behind. So change with the times. Um, let's keep going. What if mum or dad die and didn't make the mark and has to come back here? Do I still have access to them to help me? Yes, of course. Um, your mum and dad are your bloodline, they're your lineage, like whether they're here or not here, physically they're there to help you. Um, sometimes relationships might, you know, break down with, you know, parents, loved ones, relatives. Um, but wherever they are, they're still connected to you because you're their blood relative. And so, um, you're saying if they came back, yes, wherever they are, whatever realm they're in, um, you're still connected to them. So do I still have access to them to help me? Yes. Um, and more importantly, you can help yourself. Um, meaning that as much as you can get help from others, you have the ability to help yourself. And you help yourself by studying, learning, upgrading, having the information, as we've already explained, to be able to do things that they may have not been able to do. Remember, it's not a one-way thing. It's also about you being able to help them. Hence why you have to help yourself first to be able to help them. You see, so, um, yeah, so to answer your question, if they didn't make it, they're still, they're still on their cycles of trying to make it you're on your cycle of trying to make it and you still have access to them because you're tied to them by way of your genetics. Um, and this is where epigenetics comes into play. The morphogenetic field comes into play. And what they mean is that you're connected to them by energetically, um, you're connected to them by being able to tap into the mental reservoir that, you know, they may have left information or their ability to do something and because you're connected to them by your bloodline and your etheric connection, you can still access their knowledge and their information and their experience. All right. Um, how should we be buried when the physical body ceases to sustain life? Um, and it, when you, again, I have to emphasize when people say we, um, they kind of put everybody in one basket, but remember, we focus on our culture as Wu Sabat. If you went to the Hindus or to the Chinese or to other people, they have their ways. Um, but most of them, if not all of them, actually come from our way and then have, obviously, um, 
diluted or changed it in some way or form. We, in ancient times, as the um, Egyptians, if you want to use that term, we, we had ceremonies and rituals of how we prepared in terms of burial, um, removing the organs, you know, this ties into the canoptic jars in ancient Egypt and so on. But when you're not in your right environment, in your own culture, practicing your rituals, then you have to kind of like do the best of what you can based on where you're at. So what we do is cremate. We don't really advocate burying at the moment based on the information provided to us by Dr. Malak Aziyo. Because the reason for that is that your, your essence physically is going to be trapped here for a longer period of time when you're buried because of the decomposition process in terms of how your, your body de decomposes. Um, but remember that because you're in a, 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 in a casket in the grave, six foot underneath the ground, then cement, and then, you know, there's a lot that keeps you here physically. And remember that your blood is in the marrow of the bones, um, where, where the, that's where the life is. Your spirit is connected to your physical. So you're trapped here physically connected to that, that physical body. So the quickest way to release your energy and to avoid any tampering in terms of your organs being harvested or, you know, these disagreeable entities and disembodied spirits feeding off of you and that energy. The best thing right now until we're back in a position where we can practice our culture and our rituals properly, don't forget we've been dispersed, right, by... Um, you know, the, the seizure and, and, and the stealing of our land where we were beginning to practice and build our, you know, build our temples and things to practice our culture. So yes, the, the quick answer is um, we, we, as Wu Sabat, uh, in the uh, Musbatu, in our culture, we, we, um, we cremate, we don't, we don't bury. But of course, if people choose and that's their wish, they choose to um, want to be buried, then you have to respect their wishes. All right, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, by, by the cremation, it releases your energy back into, into the ethers much quicker. And then you can um, remember the physical body is just one aspect of you, but you still got your other essence that can travel on. So by releasing the energy from your physical body, you're not trapped and connected to your other etheric. So it's like a portion of you still here and you're trying to move on. If we reincarnate, how are we supposed to remember the lessons we're supposed to learn from the last life? Um, it, it, it's different for everyone, not everybody. Everyone's unique in terms of why they're reincarnating and why you know what I mean? They may remember, because you have a disc, you have something called a me disc, that everything is recorded on your records. This is where the concept of um, you having two angels on either side in Islam recording everything you do come from. And um, we have a, a, a master's secret called the physical you, uh, the, sorry, the spiritual you after the physical you dies which explains in great detail. We have something called the 24 elders that also go into great detail in terms of what happens when you're crossing over. And so, um, what was the question? Yeah, so there they may be reasons why you're coming back where they, the elders, the, the overseers, the watchers are able to um, erase some parts of your disc and then put you back in a place where, you know, you, maybe you, you did something that you regretted it and it's sincere and they decide to kind of erase that part um, of your life and then put you back. So I'm just saying like, there are different reasons how and why you reincarnate. Um, and some of your memories, 
you can retain and some, sometimes you can't because your disc is white. So it, it all depends on the circumstance. And um, again, there was, you know, the, the video with Terence Howard when he was saying how he remembered when he was coming back, when he was in the womb. Um, that's his experience, of course, but I'm just using that as a, a reference to say that there are people that do remember and, and, and carry certain memories. Now, when you come back, um, depending on which family you're born into, because people ask me again, um, I've explained that you're coming back in the bloodline, but remember that your bloodline for generations is all over the planet, meaning that you might have distant relatives and people that you don't know that have had children, that have had children, that have had children, and you may be born into one of those families um, which is still your bloodline, but then you choose or like depending on what you're coming back to fulfill that you didn't complete the last time, they might put you with a family that's going to help you achieve or accomplish that this time around. You remember you have 24 to 24,000 cycles or opportunities to, to right the wrongs and fix yourself before you can move on. Um, the point is no one actually knows what, or you may not know what cycle you're in. This could be your 24th time, or it could be your 100th time, or your last time in terms of just 24,000th time, you see. So, um, so where was that question? Yeah. How are we supposed to remember the lessons we're supposed to learn from the last um, and, and you have family and um, your, you know, that will help you and guide you. And that's what Wu Sabat is as well. It's a remembering tool. It's a way that allows you to, in the physical world, be able to have connection and tap into the other realms and, and travel and, you know, learn things and experience things so that you can apply them in your, in your current cycle life. Um... My question is, if the original race is African and with these other new creations like the Caucasian or Mexican, are they able to reach to the nine ether or are they considered disagreeables with the six ether? Again, please try and ask your question in the most clear manner possible. Um, so my question is, the race of African... Mexicans are able to, um, no, you have nine, nine ether, okay, so the Nagarus or the Negroids or the African race are nine ether and have nine ether here um, and others have lower degrees of ether. Ether is in everything but at different levels and different vibration. So if you're a six ether being, the only way you can raise yourself further than six ether is through the, the female who can mix with a Nagaru or a Negroid male nine ether being. That will help her raise and upgrade, yeah? Um, but others, they will remain on their like eight ether, seven ether, six ether, all right, um, but because ether is in everything, it's like saying hydrogen is in everything, or oxygen, or melanin is in everything, but there are variations of it. So everyone has melanin, but some beings like the Negroid race or the African race, they actually constantly produce it if they haven't damaged themselves. But then you have like the Caucasian, who doesn't, who's recessive as in their melanin is regressive. Um, and so this is why and the environment you're in is conducive for you. So if you're water, you're best to be in water. If you're fire, it's best to be in fire. If you're nine ether, a melaninated being, it's best for you to be in the sun because the sun enhances and um, helps you produce more melanin. Whereas if you're uh, a Caucasian, 
that is suffering from melanoma or your melanin recessive, when you're in the sun, it affects you negatively. Like you find it hard to see, you find it hard to breathe. It burns your skin and you can get skin cancer. So you're more likely to be in cooler climates like Europe or in the mountains where it's cooler. And that's why, not necessarily because it's nature, it's natural nature. And um, so well, uh, Mexicans are they able to reach the nine ether. Um, in terms of genetically, you can only reach to what you're composed of. In far as hair, um, only the woolly hair beans, the nine ether beans have hair, everyone else has fur. Um, so in terms of intellect, whatever way you want to look at it, intellect, your brain is going to have neuromelanin and the Negroes are going to have more. So it's natural nature, um, races, beings, animals, things vibrate on their own frequency. And so this is why it doesn't make sense for if you're a nine ether being, if you reduce your vibration and you're vibrating on a six ether, doing things that are for six ether beings, like the foods you eat, like the, the clothes you wear, the practices that you, that you partake in are on lower vibrations. You're doing yourself a disservice if you are able to maximize that and be on nine ether. So you have people that are trying to raise their vibration and because they can't do it on their own, they will ride you, piggy bank off of you to try and reach nine ether. And you that may have nine ether, but not utilizing it, you're gonna fall. And then with the mixing now, in terms of, as I gave an example of a female Caucasian mixing with a Negro and male, it's gonna raise her. and it's energy exchange. So in terms of the, they pull energy from you. you they lose, you, the, the Nagaru male or the Negro male would lose a chakra because chakra, which, which is an energy center, which means that she would draw that energy from you. So when you see, um, and, and vice versa, when you see a, an, a, a Negro female with a Caucasian male, she's now dropping down and he's pulling that energy from her. And when you look at it from an energetic um, pers perspective, you can see that sometimes it's like something is missing, that like the soul might be missing because it's being pulled away from you, you know? So I hope that really answered that question in terms of um, the different races vibrate on the different ether levels. Um, and this is where the religion technology comes in because if you look at churches for example black churches will have a different vibration the songs they sing the way they even though like i'm a musician if you're playing gospel songs when you play it in say a catholic or christian church methodist i'm sorry caucasian churches you have to play it a certain way that it's not too <laughs> doesn't have too much soul um, when you go to like the black churches, there's a lot more animation, dancing, singing. It's like you're in a concert because of the different vibration. It's like it's more conducive to be a certain way um, for the different races and the different ether levels and the different vibrations. I hope that's answered that question for you. When we die, we, are we going to be aware of it or will it feel like a dream? Um, it depends on how you die. Um, and the word die is not really appropriate because as an energy being, you never die. Energy cannot be destroyed. Yes, um, the most peaceful way to die or cross over more appropriately or translate or transmute, transmute is to be peaceful, lying down in your sleep because like the master teacher partner Bab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Ziyuk has explained to us, sleep is like the, the sister to death. Um, meaning that if you went to sleep and didn't wake up and you crossed over peacefully, you wouldn't know any different. Um, however, if you had a horrific accident or died in, a, in an untimely way to how you were supposed to, 
then that's going to be traumatic. It's going to create a different energy field. Um, so he explains, if you get that scroll I mentioned before, the spiritual you after the physical you dies, he explains how the energy, you can feel it. Like some people when they're actually awake, when like they know they're about to cross over, like loved ones who have visited people passing or crossing over, you know, in the hospital, in the bed, they will tell you that how, like, basically your, your vagus nerve, which is where, like, it's like the energy is drawn through and it's just pulled out. Um, in our book, um, Fast Track, um, Your Spiritual and Conscious Journey, uh, we explain a lot in detail about how this process takes place. But yes, you can be aware of it, that, 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 that essence leaving your body. And some people can even see their astral body, body, body <laughs> um, looking down at their physical body. And people who have um, had a near-death experience will tell you that they've had this experience. And they, you have time in your, in your, 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 your being without the physical body to travel and visit loved ones and things like that. And um, some of them will feel you, they will feel your presence. And um, those who are highly spiritual may be able to see you. And this is where um, people say ghosts and things like that because they can personify you. It's about you having the ability to raise yourself spiritually to a point where you can personify beings that are coexisting with you but on a different dimension or a different vibration you see so we have a part of that called the ghost that goes into detail um, feeding the forces um, there are many many scrolls that go into this but yeah to answer your question you can be aware of it or will it feel like a dream yeah the dream one can be true also like I said when you're translating or trans muting through when you go to bed or go to sleep and never wake up. Um, I've always been scared of the dark since childhood. I can't stay at home at night by myself. It's like my mind starts playing tricks on me or I'm sensing something. What could be, could it be? Could it be a passed down trauma from my ancestors? Yes, um, this is again such an excellent question because it plays into the whole racism trump card, meaning that black people have been taught to be afraid of the dark, which is really being afraid of yourself because of the whole like Jesus being white in the Christian religion anyway, with the blonde hair, blue eyes and everything white is supposed to be all right. Everything black has a negative connotation. You know, Dracula is a, you know, black, everything to do with funeral that's morbid it's like people wear black um the good actors are wearing white the bad actors sorry the heroes in in act actors in the movies um the heroes wear white the bad guys wear black and you can go on and on the blackboard the whiteboard blacklisted all of this even to the point of when they say when you're waking up they say you're enlightened right? The Illuminati, all of these things deal with light. And that is to put the spell on you to think that everything black or dark is bad. But then the question was asked by the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, if God said, let they be light, as in the biblical text, or if the Muslims say, Allah is the light of the heavens, but light is limited. Light was created when God said, let there be light. That means that God would have been in darkness, which would, would have been black, dealing with supreme balancement, because light is chaotic. Light brings about chaos. And so this is programming that is done from a very early age to make you as a black or a dark skinned person hate yourself. And so you get scared of being in the dark. And what you're feeling is your, is your energy, your own presence. And people are afraid to sleep in the dark because they have to have the light on. And when you say the Illuminati and being enlightened, meaning that 
they're pushing light over dark. And you should be really darkened when you get intellect because in the dark there's intellect because how would the light know of what to do and how did it come about and light travels at a speed, right? Which varies, um, but you normally get 186,272 miles per second or you have the feet and depending on the measurement you're using, but it fluctuates. But no matter how fast light travels, it's confined within the darkness of space. So even when you look into the, to the cosmos or look into the sky at night, you see um, all the stars, which become galaxies or solar systems, galaxies, universes, but they're all still engulfed by the darkness, you see. So this is the trick. So you should learn to sleep without the light because you get the best rest in light. And that light is that, that they say Lucifer is the what? The light. So um, that's why when we talk about light, we go, there's different types of light, different variations of light. Light blinds. If I was shining light into your eyes, you will go blind. Like some people do, um, like from the, the Hindus, they do a lot of staring into the sun till they're blind, things like that. And the whole point of what I'm explaining is that you have to learn to overcome that fear. And it's the fear of yourself. You have to learn to, you notice every device you have, like they make sure that light is constantly in existence in your room. So for example, if your phone's got lights or the, the sockets will have a light or the little cameras or your computer, there's always a light which they're trying to make presence, the light of Lucifer constantly present. So if you can try to eliminate all lights, because um, you have blue lights, you have the little red lights, you have the, and the little green lights. There's always some light, whether, you know, it's on your device. So when you're um, going to, let me just read that question again. Always been scared of dark since childhood. I can't stay at home by myself. It's like my mind starts playing tricks on me. Yeah, because what could be done? What could it be? Could it be a past trauma? Yes, it's the traumas from your childhood, from them pushing. And yeah, if your parents were the same and it gets passed on from generation to generation, there are people who can't stay in the house without a noise, without the TV, without the radio. You know, this is the same thing. Like, it's all distractions to the point where you don't tune into yourself, your real being. That's who you're afraid of. When you're by yourself, you start looking at the shadows and thinking there's something there. That's, that's you because you have light within you anyway. That's why you can see in the dark as an egoid. Um, the master teacher taught us that when you're in the dark room, it only takes a few seconds, your eyes will readjust. And where does the light come from? It comes from the light within you that then projects outwards so that you're able to see. Caucasians can't see in the dark or a lot of people like, they have to use apparatus. So you had in aviation, where pilots couldn't see in the dark. And this is why they used to use a lot of black pilots um, because of, again, the lack of melanin. So they had to create devices to be able to see in the dark. So soldiers, they use, you know, like, um, what's it called? Uh, not infrared, but they, it might be infrared. They use certain lights with glasses to be able to see in the dark. So yeah, don't be afraid of the dark, especially if you're a dark melaninated being, just overcome that fear with time. Turn off the lights, try and sleep in the dark. There's nothing to be afraid of but yourself. And if you're not afraid of yourself, you'll be good. All right, let's keep going. Um, do you guys have a digital library of books? I'm sure I answered this question in the last episode. Um, yeah, I did answer this in the last episode. Um, we're working on having more of a digital library. Um, there are some books already available as I, I answered this question the last time. Um, but if you want to get in touch with us and put a proposal and something we can work on, we can put that to, to the administration and um, yeah, we can talk about that. So that was for J007, JG007. Um, one 
I am one interested in truth. I like to follow Wusabak, but I have also been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Who should I listen to when being taught between Wusabak and my Western doctors? Who has the most facts? Um, we've explained there are different, different situations and different circumstances. What they term schizophrenia might have to do with the multiple personalities that you have. So Wusabat helps you to understand how to deal with that situation and deals with how you can silence these personalities. And by you practicing Wusabat and doing the things that you know, you're taught, it will help you with that. However, we're not here to give you medical advice. Um, we deal with natural remedies, we deal with natural herbs and the things that will help you in terms of controlling your mind. We have a scroll called the mind. I would definitely recommend you get hold of that if you haven't read that already, because the mind is about the voices in your head and silencing the ones that are not yours and being able to know which ones are agreeable and which ones are disagreeable. Having said that, if you've been on medication through the Western system, um, you can become dependent on that medication and there would have to be a process of you learning how to wean yourself off if you have to. But however, certain medical conditions, if you need medication, um, we're not here to advise you. You'll have to seek that from your practitioner, your GP. However, there are natural remedies. Yeah, most medical or Western medicines are taken from the natural herbs anyway. So people will, when they know this information, um, they will be like, you know, why not find an alternative, or they call it alternative medicines? Because you have to think the pharmaceutical industries are based on profits, a lot of them, right? So it's in their interest for you to only cure the symptoms and not provide a, a full cure because then you won't need to buy the medication anymore. So you have to think for yourself, seek out alternatives in terms of speaking to herbalists and other practitioners that can remedy things using natural herbs, okay? So it's not a matter of who should you listen to, you can listen to, to both and make your choice based on the results of what works for you, all right? If you ask me, Wul Sabat all the way, because um, Wul Sabat deals with actual facts and natural nature, the natural nature of things, that's Wul Sabat, natural ether energy, and you can heal pretty much everything with frequencies, with natural herbs, all right? I feel the calling, 14 BNW. Um, okay, so now you've got to do something about it because Wu Sabat is about putting it into practice. So if you feel the calling, um, I don't know where you are, where you're located, but you should seek the community closest to you. Um, if you're too far away from any communities, then you can still plug in online with us go to nashat.co.uk, hit join us, and we will connect with you and then work with you wherever you are. Um, so if you're feeling the calling, then the next thing is to take action. Um, and it's not just about entertainment. This is not entertainment, reading and listening, like watching a video like it's, oh, another great podcast. Um, not if you want to take it further, if you want it to really work for your life and help transform your life for the better, then you have to put it into practice, yeah? Read, 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 study, 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 and then put it to work practically in your life, physically, spiritually, mentally, okay? Thank you for sharing this information with the community. Hotep, Hotep, Hatap, peace. Um, thank you. You also need to do your part in sharing it. Um, we share it with you to share it, for you to share with others, for them to share it with others. And this is how we change the world for the better. 
by spreading Wu Sabat. All right. Uh, what happens if both husband and wife die at the same time? Exactly a road traffic accident. Do they continue leaving, living, I think that together on the other side or are they go to their respective families? Again, this is a good question in so far as you stand alone in the sense that when you come into this world, you come by yourself. When you leave, you leave by yourself. And what you do in between that time, which is a reality that you're born and it's a reality that you live and then it's a reality that you cross over. Um, everyone's journey is dependent on them, their actions and what they do, their thoughts. Um, and so, yeah, when, when you cross over, it's not guaranteed that you're going to continue together. This is why you have to make your decisions in this life of what you're doing, what you're exposed to, what you're listening to, what you're following, because ultimately at that gate, you're on your own. It is possible, however, that you may be, um, that, you know, you talk about soulmates and you, you know, there are other things where you may have coexisted in a previous lifetime and it is possible for soulmates and for people to um, reconvene on the other side and so on. But um, it depends on your development and your, this is where if you are married and you become one, then you're really one soul. Um, we have a part of that called soulmates. Um, we have other part of that that deal with the whole union. This is why it's very important when you're with someone that you're with the right person for the right things and that you learn and grow together because you may grow apart. Um, and this is why I say if you're a Christian and somebody else is, you know, a Muslim or whatever, you may have different opinions, different in mind. And then in terms of your offspring, um, you know, there may be conflict. So really it's about becoming one as a union. And then that way, energetically, you're connected because you're exchanging fluids, exchanging energy, um, men your mentality in terms of how you think. Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, so yes, it is possible, but the majority of the time, you're on your own in terms of your journey. Um, but yeah, so I hope that's answered that question. So it depends on how connected you and your wife are, or the husband and wife in this question, how they are, have they become one soul, one being? because that's what ultimately is the fusion of coming together to be that one, one soul. All right. So, um, yeah, it's like if you're traveling as um, energy, if you're combined, because remember energy cannot be destroyed, it can only be transformed or trapped. But if it's one, it moves as one. Okay, um, blessings family, knowing our ancestors. We who don't know who our parents are, how can we address or honour our ancestors? Okay, so when we say ancestors, it's not just based on your parents. It's your parents, 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 parents as well. Um, your uncles, your aunties, you know, they, they're your relatives. So when we say ancestors, your immediate ancestors, yeah, but you also have all the way to the original beings that we came from. So your Salafu would be your ancestors. But when we're talking about the Natharu or the overseers or the watchers or the ones that have elevated so far that were the original parents that seeded us, um, we're still connected to them. It's just that the closest connection is the one in the closest uh, proximity to you. So your mum is going to be the closest to you because she gave birth to you. And then 
Next in line will be your grandmother. Next in line, your great-grandmother. Next in line, your great-great-grandmother. They're all your ancestors. So even if you don't know your parents, you're still connected to them genetically and by your bloodline and to the others as well, you know. So, um, yeah, when we say ancestors, we, you, whether you know them or not, they're still your ancestors and then you can still address them. This is why you can still talk to them. You can still, if you have any other relatives that you can learn and find out more about them, if you didn't get to know them, get pictures, try and do a family tree to connect with you know, other relatives that are your ancestors. And they are also there to, to help you. Greetings. Do we continue to have a spiritual connection with our birth names, even when it's changed? Is it common practice for women in Wusabak culture to change their last names to their husband's last names? Um, in terms of the name, remember the name is a tone, it's a vibration, and a vibration can affect you. So, um, when you change your name from a negative tone to a positive one, it's going to have a positive effect on you. So, if you were calling yourself Killer, for example, um, that that's a terrible example, but um, if you use a negative tone that didn't resonate with you or affected you negatively, then changing is going to bring about positive. So if you're being called, this is the whole point about the Caucasian trying to strip you off of your culture, your identity, your tones. You know, the Roots movie kind of go into this, like instead of being called Kunta Kente, you know, there's, there's um, the tones and vibration in the. That's why we choose names in our language. Sorry, my brain moves too fast for my lips sometimes, so I have to always retract and try to finish my sentences. Um, so yes, um, you change the vibration, you change the energy. This is why I'm saying that giving you like through slavery and giving you the Caucasian, the slave masters names was done on purpose so that you cut off that connection between your ancestors and the tones like ringing the wrong telephone number an example i use all the time so yes um you you, then you have you have a birth name you have a spiritual name and you have a soul name right and this is why learning wusabat and learning you know we have the book of names that express and teach you where names come from and the tones and the vibrations and what they're linked to so it's important to choose and get names that resonate with you and some of those tones will help you when you're crossing over. Um, so you see in ancient times the, the pharaohs and they had a katush and they had you know their names or the tones. Um, you had a big name and a small name. So this is where Wusabat as a culture is important because once you learn and start to get the information and get your right names and your right tones, it, and it will help you. Um, what was the second part? Oh, in terms of the females changing their names, um, that's a Western practice in terms of, obviously, depending on how you get married and what culture, but in Wusabat, the, um, the female have a stronger lineage in terms of our, um, our culture. Um, but really, it's normally, you keep your family name because it ties into like how, um, how the, the, the records are kept in time. Like say, for example, the master teacher in, in Islam would have been known as Isa al-Hadi al-Makti, which basically is his name Al-Hadi will be his dad's name, Al-Makti will be his grandfather's name. And, and in, in ancient times and cultures, that's what we did to keep the, the names. Um, so, um, yeah, that's a good question. I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on that myself in terms of, um, yeah, if the, the, male, the female takes on the male's name. That's more of a European thing um, and depends on how you get married. 
All right, but I'll come back on the next episode um, with more information on that. Um, it was translated to the book of the. It was translated to the book of the coming forth by day or light. It was because it was found in a tomb that it was renamed, like everything else. That's not a question. Um, I think it's probably in reference to what I said the last time about when people call it the Book of the Dead, and I said it was because um, it was found in the sarcophagus. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of things get changed based on misinterpretation and misinformation. Can you tell by these questions it's going to take us another 2,000 years to elevate our universal consciousness, the perfect black? Whilst I get what you're saying, um, yeah, because sometimes I do feel like that. I feel like the questions are not um, raising. However, you have to remember that kind of comes over a little bit egotistical as well and judgmental. Um, we're dealing with a shock and love and unity, right? So even though we may have surpassed certain information or we're at a different stage, you have to remember that not all flowers blossom at the same time. So you have to be patient sometimes enough to allow people to grow in their own kind of like um, trajectory or space. But yes, I do take the point you're making because sometimes you, yeah, the questions just seem to be, um, yeah, like, but you know, we, we, we always encourage people to ask their questions and it's what they want to know. So, um, but I take the point, um, and not like we like, okay, let me, I do, I do need to talk, talk a bit more about that. So if we're building, right, you're going to have the architects, the people that are the thinkers that are going to plan and think about how this thing we're going to build. Then you're going to have the people that oversee or manage. Um, then you're going to have those who are actually doing the works. You know, um, like in masonry, in terms of people that work with stone, the builders, you're going to have those who do quality assurance. And you're going to have those who go and bring the, the bricks. And you're going to have those who maybe provide water to the workers. Or, so everyone has a part to play in a building project. And so the people are going to be on different levels. So we have to recognize this and be um, welcoming and encouraging to everyone, regardless of what level they're at. So it, we will still build that pyramid, we will still build that structure, but you just gotta have different people at different levels. And even in a corporate structure, they do this. You know, you have the, uh, the CEO, you have the, you know, the regional managers and the managers and the workers and, you know, the labor force, etc. So we apply, um, we, we know, we, we know what you're saying, but Let's, let's keep to the love and the shook as well. Do you have a location in Jamaica? If not, I can help with that. Yes, we do have a location in Jamaica. However, we can have several locations in Jamaica, several locations anywhere in the world. And this is what the aim should be. So what I would suggest for you is to go on our website, unitedsabeansworldwide.com, go to contacts, go to um, uh, stores and find Jamaica and contact the brothers and sisters in Jamaica and connect with them and work with them. They will, uh, you can help them build and then you can help to branch out and build somewhere else because we are builders and we have to continue to spread out worldwide. So again, it's not just saying it, it's the action, the action that comes with the, with the talk. Um, okay, would you please explain the origin? So do you have, okay, that was that one. Would you please explain the origin of the goddess Hikat? Hikat? Um, I'm not sure if you mean Hikat. I don't know which goddess you're referring to. It would help if you kind of give more information. Um, if you mean 
Okay. Please give me a reference where you're getting that from and the way it's spelled, I'm not familiar with that. And um, what I'll do then is on the next episode, I can give you more information. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure who you're referring to. Can you go into detail about Tamare in Georgia and what exactly happened? <laughs> that will be a whole documentary and there's already a documentary called Mysteries Behind Closed Doors. Please watch that. It's on YouTube. You can Google it. Mysteries Behind Closed Doors. Um, when you say what happened, it's so vague. And you're saying go into detail about Tamaray in Georgia and what exactly happened. So much happened. I mean, um, we had land, 476 acres. I'm going to give you a summary, but watch Mysteries Behind Closed Doors. Um, Go on the freedoctoryork.com website, um, go on Clubhouse and go to the Free Dr. York um, channel, um, ask questions in classes because there's so much information to what happened. But we had land, which we, we, we bought ourselves, 476 acres of land in Eaton, Georgia. Um, we developed it. Um, we were building it and because of racism, because it's a small town, um, it was on 4 4 Shady Dale Road in Eaton, Georgia. We were okay and then because of racism, when they started to see the number of black people that were coming there, the, the small-minded sheriff and you know, officials in Eaton, Georgia started to harass us basically because it started off with building permits because when you have land, before you build the houses and structures, you know, you may just get like trailer houses just to have somewhere to live whilst you're working. And some people use that to say, oh, they, they didn't have anything. They just had trailer, trailer houses. But no, that was a process. And when the building started, you had to get permits and things. And, um, you know, due to the racism, the officials started to not give the permits. And it was becoming a bit a difficult situation because you have all this land to develop and build. And they started to use building violations and permits. But that was just a, a ploy to start to get into our business in terms of trying to incite and create something that didn't exist. But with a permit, it's a very simple process where if you need a permit for something, you apply for it and then you build it and then you have inspectors come and check and see if you haven't built it according to the permit, they will tell you what you've done wrong, how to remedy, remedy it and fix it. And we would go back and do that and they will come back and they will say something else is wrong. After a while, it was obvious that they were just starting to find ways to create problems for us. So that's where it originally started from. Um, and then you had the sheriff getting involved where he's not even a building inspector. And um, that's kind of the beginnings of the, the story in terms of them um, starting to hassle us. And then, of course, when we had like Saviour's Day or Z festivals. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna go into all the details. The story is so long, but cut a long story short, um, it ended up with accusations and all kinds of stuff. And they used that as a reason to steal the land and to accuse and, you know, incarcerate our master teacher um, who was not even anything to do with the land at the time. He wasn't even the land owner. Um, but that's a long story. You can watch all of this in the Mysteries Behind Closed Doors or go onto the Free Dr. York site, freedoctoryork.com. Um, a lot of information on that. But So they stole our land, dispersed us, and disrupted us building um, our Egyptian theme park, a place where it was beautiful. Anyone that has ever, ever visited and been there would tell you it was a lovely place. People from all walks of life used to come there. And um, 
yeah, um, and, and experience heaven on earth. Um, so yeah, I hope that's given you something, but yeah, I, I, I could make documentaries on that whole situation. All right. Um, actually, remember, look at the bottom. When we hit 100,000 subscribers, a documentary is going to be um, yeah, released to the, to the members to celebrate, which goes into more of what you're asking about, you know, the intricacies and the inside story of certain things. All right. Um, what is the best practice for clothes left by our loved ones who have crossed over? What do we do with them for their clothes? Um, it's down to, it's really a preference of um, the people. But remember that clothes and objects and items do carry energy. Um, and so, you know, it's, that's a good question because sometimes people go to like charity shops or certain places and buy things forgetting that you may be taking on that energy with that um, item that you've purchased um, and it can, it can bring you all sorts of issues. So um, positive and negative. Um, I mean, that's down to the individual, but you can, I don't know. I don't, we, I've never really been asked that question before, but um, you could give them away to charity. You could burn them. You could give them to family members. Um, I think it's a matter of preference from the, from the person who owns them. I, could, I can't really give you, you should do this when it comes to that. But that's again something that like I've never been asked before. So I'll look into that and maybe if there's any more information, elaborate on the next episode. Um, the brother is a good brother, but at times I've seen him talk about quantum subjects which he clearly doesn't have the overstanding on. It's important not to talk about beliefs loosely. This is what fuels the systems against us and truth. This is from J1679. Uh, again, um, if, if each one teach one, if there's something you want to mention, you said he talks about quantum subjects, but you don't give any of the subjects that you're claiming are clearly don't have an overstanding on. So please specify what, what it is. And if, if it's incorrect, we can correct it. Um, it's not about ego and who knows more than the other person. Um, then you say it's on it's important not to talk about beliefs loosely. So if you're talking about quantum subjects, I would presume that's dealing with science and facts. So then to say it's not, it's not, it's important not to talk about beliefs loosely. Beliefs are not facts. So um, we, we try not to deal, well, we don't deal with beliefs. We, we avoid beliefs for facts. This is what fuels the systems against us. Which systems and who is the us and fuels the systems against us and truth? Please be specific, like, if I've said something that you think is incorrect or disagree with or that it was a mistake or whatever, at least say what it is so that we can um, remedy it, correct it and kind of have something to go by. It's very open and broad and kind of like even when you're saying it fuels the systems against us and truth, if it, that's, that's confusing to me. This is what misinformation is what can fuel the systems. Um, thank you for the teaching. Can you explain on RH blood type? Yeah, again, please be more specific. Like, can you explain on RH blood type? What would you like me to explain? Um, there are different blood types. Um, we've mentioned about RH negative blood types being of extraterrestrial origin. Um, I've answered the question on blood types quite a few times. So can you explain on our blood type? I mean, if there is a particular issue or a situation you want to know more about in terms of our rich blood type, then ask that, that question. Um, but yeah, I don't know, like, 
what you want to know about Rh blood type. Um, we can we can even probably Google that. Um, but yeah, if you, I'm gonna also uh, to be more strict, I think if I if I see a question that it's not clear and not, um, you, you have to learn how to ask questions. And I'm just gonna not give it too much time and just skip it. So please learn how to ask questions and be specific in terms of what you'd like to know. Uh, I'm reading a few scrolls from the master teacher. What I need more understanding is when it comes down to the mitochondrial DNA from the woman. So let me ask this to make sure I'm understanding what I'm reading correctly. So the mitochondrial DNA can only be passed from the woman, not the man. And if mitochondrial DNA is the genetics of the bloodline where we as Africans can communicate with our ancestors. Now, if the woman is Caucasian and she has baby with an African man, the baby is considered biracial, but because the mother is Caucasian, is that child cut off from his father ancestors because it's considered a new creation, a new bloodline, and is the child only connected to the mother's ancestors because of the mitochondrial DNA, since the father cannot pass it on to the child. This is a, an example I explained last week about asking a question, making statements, you know, just elongating it, and it's just a lot. So I'm going to have to try and decipher and try and understand what you're trying to ask. You're mixing up the DNA in terms of the mitochondrial DNA being passed from female to female, um, regardless whether you're African or Caucasian. The point is that the mtDNA, the mitochondrial DNA, is only passed from female to female to keep the genetic records, right? That doesn't mean that... Um, uh, I have to kind of try, there was some confusion in what you were saying. So, I hope that clears that up. So the mitochondrial DNA is passed from female to female to female, from female offspring to female offspring, not to male offspring. So if a woman has two children and she has a, a female and a male, the mitochondrial DNA will be passed to her daughter and, and the daughter will pass it on to her daughter. And if she doesn't have any female children, then it won't be passed down to the female. However, that, that, that doesn't mean that the DNA, other, other DNA is not passed from the, the father to the offspring as well, both male or female. Um, and then there was a bit about, and if the mitochondrial DNA is the genetics of the bloodline, where we as Africans can communicate with our, the, no, the mitochondrial DNA is not the only way you communicate with your ancestors. You can communicate with your ancestors through your bloodline and other DNA. It's not just through the mitochondrial DNA. Now, if the woman is Caucasian and she has a baby with an African man, the baby is considered biracial, but the mother is Caucasian. Is that child cut off? Um, the baby being bi what you consider biracial doesn't have anything to do with it because if, if the baby is a female, she's passing the mitochondrial DNA to that female. Also, if it's a mixture between an African and a Caucasian, the child is still more African anyway because the strong genetics is in the African. So the only difference when you have a, 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 a Caucasian and an African child is that if the child chooses to lean more to the Caucasian side, then they enhance the genetics or the DNA of the Caucasian side. Um, and that's why when you have children that are mixed like that, they can lean either way. But genetically, the dominant genes are going to be the African or the, the Negro DNA anyway, uh, but they can choose in terms of personality and in terms of 
how they behave and the things they lean towards is going to be more, if they go to the Caucasian side, then they're going to be more Caucasian. So if they don't like spicy food or if they don't like being in the heat, if they don't, you know, do anything on the cultural side of the African side, then they're going to be like behaving and acting like a Caucasian. But their DNA is still going to be more dominant in terms of the African genes. Um, and then finally, I think um, because the mother is Caucasian, is that child cut off from his father's ancestors? No, because the DNA is still, there's other DNA. It's considered a new creation or a new bloodline. And is the child only connected to the mother's ancestors because of the mitochondrial DNA since the father cannot pass it? No, that's, no, I've already answered the question. So just to cl clarify, mtDNA, mitochondrial DNA, is passed from female to female regardless of whether you're African or Caucasian. Um, other DNA from both parents is still passed on to the child or the offspring. And um, the bloodline is still there because your blood is you, you, the mixture of the blood from both parties and your parents, 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 parents. All right, I hope that's cleared that up for you. Um, let's come, I have two questions. I am real Mora. Um, I have two questions. I had, one, I started reading the Bible recently and noticed that the God of the Old Testament really enjoys the smell of blood and burnt flesh. Can you please speak on that and how it connects to Yoruba religious worship like Ogun where they shed blood? All right, so yeah, that's the whole point we keep making in terms of the gods of the Bible. These are entities that they... Um, they eat flesh, they like the smell of blood, they like blood, they drink blood. You can read the entire book of Leviticus and see this and other books as well. So you're right, um, they like the smell, the savour of burnt carcass and try to um, get animals sacrificed, etc, etc. Now, how, how the uh, Yoruba got influenced by, um, by, by the Arabs? And this is where some of the practices now in Yoruba, which is our original ancient way before it was desecrated or influenced by Arabs and other Caucasian and Europeans. Um, this is where these practices of the blood came into it. Original Yoruba didn't have these bloodsheds and blood sacrifices. And this is why the deities that they are um, calling on and worship on have like the same thing as happened like in you know in the Christian world and religion where they substitute names and um, or superimpose and so you're thinking you're calling on a particular deity but then the practices and the things you're doing towards the wrong deity because that's not something that we did so Wusabat doesn't deal with blood sacrifices and you know cutting up animals on it or anything like that. So that that's been that's just like our original way of life being messed up by influences by other people who did those things. All right. Um, the second question: I've been meditating for the past three months, but when I started to read the Bible, I decided to meditate on the passage that says. You shall worship no other gods except me, for I am a jealous God. During my meditation, I heard the word Samana. When I googled it, it meant wandering monk. Please, can you speak on this? Um, you should meditate in... The, well, this is what we're trying to say, that the Bible is not what you should be meditating on. Um, the Bible itself, it's a mistranslation. Probably about less than 10% of the Bible has worthwhile or useful information. I know that might come as a shock to, to many people, but when you're dealing with something that has been mistranslated, plagiarized from other ancient tablets, which are not really for us anyway, because those books are not our records, right? 
we deal with Wu Sabat and we have a culture and we have our own scriptures known as Pa Tarak and we have the master's secrets, we have actual facts. That's what you should be dealing with. We actually have a Pa Tarak called meditation which deals with what you should be doing. See, people will try to have their own flavour or version of Wu Sabat and say, I'm listening to you guys but I'm going to do this or I do this and we're like yeah but then that's not our culture that's not our books that's not what we are advising you to use as a means of your salvation we, we say you can read any book you can study everything if you need to but you should be grounded in Wu Sabat and those books are just like reference books you see so to, to use something get a result and then ask me about your result when I wouldn't advocate you doing that in the first place. It's like, that's a spell. Um, and it's like, I read the Bible, I called on an entity that gave me a, a particular word. I don't know what that word means. So I'm gonna come to you to break it down for me when I would be like, don't call on that entity in the first place. Don't read or use that book in the first place. So um, if you're new, then, Wusabat is what we teach, and that's the culture that we practice. Um, we teach on all the other stuff because our people who have not graduated to Wusabat yet are still caught up in the spell of religion in these books, and we have to wean them off or, or teach them to learn for themselves so they can learn to want what we have to give, all right? Um, hello and thank you for all your info. I sincerely appreciate it. We say Rahubat, not hello, because hell is low, low vibration, low, down. But yeah, thank you. I know what you mean. Um, I sincerely appreciate it. We appreciate you. One question I have is about the so-called saviors that could not even save themselves. Does this not apply to Dr. Malachi York? I know you say he's locked up for providing info and I get that, but why can he not save himself like all the others, like Jesus, etc.? Thank you for your providing info. Um, okay. Um, you say it like he's no longer here, um, but in the case of the ones you, others you've mentioned, they, they're no longer here, so they didn't save themselves. This is English and the spell. It's like you'll have a word like do, doing, done, go, going, gone, right? Now, if you're still here, that means you're still able to save yourself because we haven't got to the stage of gone, yeah? So there's a lot of detail and levels to the whole situation with what's happening with him and not everyone can actually appreciate or understand that for example he's a tri-union being just like the physical body can be locked up but the the real being as known as yanun can never be locked up because you're dealing with an incarnation that can incarnate through different cultures, different times, different periods, different dimensions. So that type of being cannot be held. However, in this physical world, like yourself, like myself, you have your physical, which is filled by your spiritual or your spirit being and your soul being. So they kind of work hand in hand because of the environment you're in. So if the physical body goes, then the spiritual and the soul being goes back to wherever it's from. You know that you can go to sleep, or what people call sleep, at what people call at night, and your body is left and you can travel and come back to it. Um, so to kind of address your question, he's still alive and the bit that i was saying that most people might not get is the fact that 
we're the ones that are trapped. Because if he has come here to, to save us and to free us and elevate us and take us to a different level in terms of consciousness and so on, with us not having access to him fully, it's a hindrance to us. And the test for us in him being locked up is to show us love and unity. This is the whole point why he says what will free him will be love and unity. And he explains that your heart, yeah, because the one thing that worldwide we need as a race and even as humanity is to master and conquer this thing called divine love. So a test is given to us, the biggest test ever, to see if a pure being, a supreme being, that can free us and elevate us, comes to this planet and is locked up. Can our love, our united love, put away our differences, our egos, and free him? And by freeing him, we free ourselves because whatever we need will be given to us in terms of the doors are open to us in terms of things that have never been done in thousands of years. So it may sound like a cop-out, but the fact that we still have this chance, this opportunity to free not only ourselves, but the entire world and humanity so that we can then elevate to higher levels, it's a test for us. So we're the ones that are locked up, not really him. Well, having said that, the test means we have to fight. We have, in terms of the legal, um, we have to go through the process of unifying. But unfortunately, many haven't learned the lesson of what this being is here to do. What, like, you know, many are close to him, but they're not close. Many have touched him, but don't really know him. You know, there's many levels to this. So um, it's a good question. And I know you didn't ask it from a place of, you know, just because as you said, you're very respectful and the way you say you appreciate it. So I appreciate your question too. But like everyone else, Jesus is no longer here. He's dead. Muhammad is dead. Uh, Mark X. Martin Luther King, you know, all, all the, those leaders you're talking about, they're no longer here. So there's a big difference. He's still here and it's our test to save him for coming to save us because everyone's looking for a saviour. But who's going to protect that saviour when he comes? Because you have entities, disagreeable beings on the planet too, that don't want to see you free because they benefit from you being controlled and enslaved, you see. So the test is really for us. I hope that answered your question. How can I contact my grandmother and father if they pass on? Flowing positive 444. Again, we have rituals, um, but sometimes people, I think there was a question, people think we're going to come on here on a public forum and just enact the rituals. They're sacred to a certain degree anyway, um, but we have been taught and told like to contact your, um, your mother and father, you need to create the right environment, the right intentions, the right space, and um, you burn sage, and you, know, you have their picture and you can communicate with them, you have an altar. Now, the, the, these are things that have been already shared publicly, but there are other things that I mean, you don't see, you know, you have like other, other cultures like the Hindus, they have their temples and certain things they go to and do certain things. We have our temples or, you know, we're in the process of building temples and because we've been targeted and as I keep saying, dispersed because of the wrongful incarceration of our master teacher, we have a lot of rebuilding to do. We're building sanctuaries where you will be instructed and taught 
these things properly. There's a sanctuary being built right now in Trinidad and it needs support. You know, the, the things that people are asking, the, the ritual stuff, and like you would be able to go to these sanctuaries, sanctuary of Yanun, and be able to, you know, partake of these rituals, go to our temples and go through these rituals. So um, I hope that's helped, but get, get, in the inside, get on the inside, connect with us to your nearest community and you will get more instructions on certain rituals, all right? Um, great greetings, teacher, student, teacher. Regarding our giving reverence to natural forces or vegetation, could you elaborate on the potential negative ways other people may use multi vegetation, spiritual warfare, voodoo based on dreams I've had with ancestors, giving guidance through dreams? How does a does protect themselves in manner that is against retention? retaliation and staying on the path of living according to the truth. Hopefully my question is clear enough. I appreciate your work in enlightening us. All right, globally. Yeah, we're in darkening you, <laughs> if you remember what I said before. And yes, in terms of like vegetation, this is why it's so important that we don't, if you see what's happening, right, even like people like, we don't allow certain people like say Bill Gates, who are buying land and buying all the farms and creating GMO and artificial seeds. And, you know, these are the things where you could buy something which is supposed to be natural or you think is natural, but it has already from the get go, from the seed, you know, the Monsanto seeds. It's like, it's like if you don't have your own environment, your own land, your own culture to cultivate and do things the way it's supposed to be done by natural nature, you can buy herbs and buy things that are not authentic. So that is one of the ways. It's like, I was having a, a discussion with somebody regarding people that, for example, still smoke or smoke weed, or they think they're smoking weed, and they're not taking in it in a natural state where there are many genetically modified things now with chemicals with all kinds of things that's going to affect you. So you might be there saying to yourself, holding a vibe and holding a, a meds and smoking something that is completely destroying you or messing up with your DNA. So in terms of the vegetation and um, as you say, spiritual warfare, it's a lot of times being tricked into thinking something is good when it's bad, like making evil fear seeming. Um, and as far as your dreams are concerned, yes, this is something that with your connection with your ancestors, um, using the morphogenetic field, as I mentioned before, and the whole epigenetics that ties into you, when you're saying you're dreaming, you're traveling, or you can communicate with your ancestors, they can guide you and give you certain information. Even in the movie, The Black Panther, they showed you when you know, the panther supposedly um, went to the other side to speak to his, his father. So um, that's how you protect yourself with Wu Sabat by getting in the right natural, um, the right na natural vegetation and herbs, um, knowing like what true black magic is, which is our science. They, they just make it as a negative connotation with black magic because they'll have like I said, the whole thing about black being bad, but then they would use white magic, which is really, its origin is from the Wicca or the Wicca religion and um, put spells on you. And they do that through Hollywood. That is something else I explain. They're using the Hollywood that cast spells through the movies and the media and, you know what I mean? Like the industries that are created and selling new products and things that are not for your you know, for your, in your best interest. Um, so yes, Wusabat will help you. Um, can we live forever? Yes, energy cannot be destroyed, but it depends on what you mean by live. Because to exist doesn't mean to live in the form like you're living now. And so you can experience other forms of existence and experience them and interact as you're doing here. But 
you can also get to a point where that is taken away from you in terms of you can no longer elevate to different, um, you know, multiverses, omniverses and experience different things, but you're just energy and that's it. You're just a part of energy, but you can't experience and do things in other forms of existence. Um, so you do live on in terms of energy because you can't destroy energy. Always envision, can you speak on Billy Meyer and contact him who is receiving knowledge? He has plenty of books and teachings out himself. Are these contacts safe to believe? A lot of those resonate, to be honest. Many thanks. Yeah, um, Billy Myers and certain people um, have you know, had interactions and been contacted by extraterrestrials, but there are different extraterrestrials that contact different people and different races and different extraterrestrials contact people in their race, like the Pleiadians will go to, you know, a lot of Caucasians. You have, you know, beings from Nirvana that are going to go to the Hindu beings, but our ancestors are the Natharu, and they will contact us. You can listen to all sorts of people out there in the world. There's some people like, I um, uh, can't remember his first name, but um, Lazar, he was working in projects where dealing with extraterrestrials. So the point is, there is a lot of information out there you can follow them if you want, but we are here representing our culture, Wu Sabat, and that's what you should be following if you, if it resonates with you. Um, but yeah, there are different people out there teaching all sorts and all kinds of things. And if information is aligned and it's factual, then it's factual. It doesn't matter where or who's coming from, but when it comes to how you live and what you practice and what you do on a daily basis, you, you really do that through your culture. And um, that's what we have, a culture with our own language, with our own dance, our own foods, our own pretty much everything, just like, you know, other races that have a culture, like the Chinese, the Hindus, and the, um, do you know what I mean? But we are African and Wusabat is an African spiritual science. Okay. Uh, is there a connection between universe and university? Yes, in so far as you're supposed to be taught about the universe when you go to the university, but you're not. You're taught how to become a slave and work for other people. You, you really get to learn about the universe or in its entirety anyway. You, you know, you might have, you know, scientific um, lectures, but yes, there should be teaching you about the universe, which they don't. Yeah, so there is a connection in that sense. Um, but uni, uni means one, so you're only dealing with one, one verse. Um, in a song you have many verses, and in terms of there are more, there are other universes and multiverses and omniverses, so uni is just one, just learning about one universe, but they don't even teach you about our one universe in the universities, they teach you things like the Big Bang Theory and um, the Darwin's Theory of Evolution and things like that, but they don't give you the facts because, you know, even where they start is incorrect because there are other universes and to have a Big Bang and they don't explain what caused the Big Bang. And, you know, there must have been something to cause the Big Bang. And, and that's where the master teacher of Parna Bhavyanun goes into the birth of our universe and the birth of other universes, you know. So Wusabat gives you all the answers and the information to learn about the universe. Um, I don't know how much time have we got left. Um, can someone die in his her dream, like literally? Example, bad nightmare and he died in his dream. Can he also simultaneously die in the physical realm? Yes, absolutely. Um, timely or untimely, some people get trapped outside of their body and don't come back. Um, and in the physical, we will view that as death. Yes, so you can. But in the dream sense, um, there's a movie called Inception that you should watch. But in the dream sense, if you really study your dreams, 
every time you're about to die, you never die in your dreams. You wake up or you cut off. So, and um, I'm sure other people can attest to that. So, but you can die in your sleep or have a, a heart attack or some something else. Um, like I said, travel and not come back to your body. But um, in terms of dying in your dream and then dying physically, as in that, um, it depends. I mean, I, I've, from experience, um, yeah, the, when you're dreaming and every time you're about to maybe like get shot or fall and something, you always seem to wake up. So, but again, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna look into that for next episode. But yes, uh, let's move on. Is it possible when a man or woman passes away? that they could come back as the opposite sex, like switching roles. Yes, um, but again, to clarify, the physical body, once it dies, uh, or what you call die, it decomposes. So you're not gonna come back in that same body, um, which is the misconception of in reincarnation, because people think it's a, deal with a cardinal coming back in the same body, that's not possible because your physical body decomposes and goes to the ground and the elements. However, your spiritual you, or like we've said many times, if you're coming back, you can be reborn in a male physical body if you were a male physical body if you were a female before, or um, vice versa where a male can be, a male spirit can be reborn in a female physical body. So this is where a lot of the transgender confusion can come in when people don't know about these other genders that you can be a, a physical male in a spiritual female, a spiritual female in a physical male body or a spiritual male in a female physical body and so the way you behave and how you act and how you feel on the inside can be different to what you look like on the outside so you see men who may have feminine tendencies their mannerisms and the way they behave and so forth and then the other way around too where you have females physically that are masculine by nature and how they behave and how they act and how they talk and how they walk. Then you have hormone sexuals, which is dealing with the hormones and not the homosexuals. So, and then on top of that, you can also have oversexed individuals. So there are so many different dynamics. So a physical male in a who has a spiritual female body because they are um, male on the outside um okay let me do it the other way so if they are attracted to the other sex let's say i am physically a female i mean i'm physically a female no, physically a male, and I am uh, spiritually a female, and I feel on the inside like I am a woman, I might want to then change my physical to match how I feel. So this is where you'd get people that would change their sexuality from being a man to a woman, and vice versa. And then you have, as I said, um, over sexual individuals who would sleep with any gender and then people get confused so you get the, the letters that come in the LGBT and so on where you've got lesbians that I may not be lesbians but it's just because they I hope this is not confusing people because I'm just saying that there are many scenarios where it's not always because somebody is 
because sometimes you'll have people that will experiment and because they feel like they're a woman, they might experiment to be a lesbian, but it's not really that. And then they will switch and change when they realize that's not me or, or the other way. So this whole subject, if you go on YouTube and watch um, Guardians and the Gateways, where one of our sisters is explaining this and she's reading um, something that the master teacher partner Bab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Z. York wrote, he explains it. And we've also got many scrolls that actually like, is God male or female that go into uh, you know, more detail about this. I hope that has given you um, enough to go on for now. But yes, so um, it is possible to switch in terms of the roles. I've watched many videos of the master teacher. Some videos he sounded religious, Islam, yet you say Wu Sabat is not any form of religion. Was the master teacher religious before fully becoming Wu Sabat? Right, again, I think I touched on this, but it's important to clarify this. He was never religious because the way that is asked is almost like to say he was religious and then he became Wu Sabat. No. Wu Sabat predates religion. Wu Sabat is what he came to teach us, or Wu Nuwap, or Nuwapu, and, or Nupu, yeah? Now, because we were not ready for it, didn't really know what it was, we hadn't raised our consciousness to a level where we were ready to break the spell of religion, we kept asking questions on religion. So he had to take time to break down religion and take us through the schools of religion, to dissect them inside out, read all their scriptures, submerge us in the practices, and to the point where we mastered it. And we had to learn the language of each scripture, each religion. So that's why you'd hear him when he's teaching on religion, he's breaking down, especially in Islam, he's breaking down the Quran, he's speaking Arabic. And if you listen to other recordings, He's breaking down Christianity, he's speaking Greek, he's speaking Hebrew. So that's why you might hear or see that because we, we graduated from all the schools of religion. Then he was like, you're now ready to be your own, like not worship other people and listen to the lies of religion and the opinions of religion. So he started to give us what he originally came to give but had to secrete it throughout the different schools until we got to a point where we, we basically um, outgrew religion and then we started to deal with Wu Sabat in his full, pristine um, purity, which is what we're doing now. Okay, cool. I think I'm gonna uh, take one more. Uh, okay, I think that's a similar question. He oh, somebody else was answering the question. Yeah, he studied practice Islam and Christianity at one time to be able to explain to these religions and, and know what he was talking about. That's why he also speaks so many languages. Absolutely. So when we go out to teach, I c we can speak to anybody. You know, we won't limit the fact that oh, you have to be following us before we can talk to you. So we can speak to a Muslim. We can speak to a Christian. We can speak to a Jew. We can speak to an Egyptologist, we can speak to anybody because that's how he groomed us. Because for us to go out to speak and save or help save the world, we have to relate to everybody, regardless of what walks of life you're coming from. So this is the strategy in how he taught being the master teacher. So we can relate to anybody because we know their books, we know, you know the practices of that religion inside out to a point where sometimes it's embarrassing for the people we're speaking to because they themselves haven't taken the time to study their own books and their own religion and the origins and the history of it and so forth. So when we're speaking to them, we're, we're showing them things in the book that they've been reading all their life but haven't studied and don't know things are in there, you know, that we, we, we show them and break down, all right? Yeah, somebody else also answered that it was a process to take us through the different schools to get to the point of information we are at now. Back then, everyone was still on religion, clearly not ready for the information he came to really bring. There you go. Thanks for that, um, Kiru Son and Ernest Tucker 9816. 
laughing out loud, yeah, right, he speaks every language. You'll be really gassing this guy up. Um, you know what's funny? That's from Beauty in U583. It's nice to make statements, but what is better is to, like, bring the facts and the evidence to, to say he can't. Um, and you try to laugh it off, but the thing is, if you understand how languages come about, you will understand that, like with anything, there's a root. And then from the root, you get the, the tree and the branches and the leaves, right? So if you understand the root language, you can see how other languages are formed. So once you, once you can speak Misbatea or Nuwapik, you can see where Arabic came from, the Semitic languages. The, like we've done this many times to show you how like Arabic and, and um, Hebrew are the same language, just different dialects or different tongues. So this is why you can say Jesus in English and say Isa in Arabic and say Yahshua in Hebrew. Or you can say Moses, then you can say Musa in Arabic, and then you can say Moshe. It's, it's like, once you know the root, it's, it's actually quite simple to learn how all languages came from the one, because there was always the first language. So you can say we'll be gassing him up, but we've got, you can read the books and you see him reading and translating, and you can listen to him on YouTube, watch videos. So... You're saying we're gassing him up. What's the purpose of that? What do we gain from that? The facts are the facts. So unless you can prove different, um, show us. Prove and show. Rahubat Musa, will there be a death festival in Georgia this year? Um, Rahubat Natiru 221, no, there won't be. As far, for now anyway, um, there won't be one. So that's worldwide, you know, so... Um, keep listening out, it may change, but at the moment they all um, have been postponed um, by the master. So, yeah, so, and it makes sense when you really think about it. Sometimes we reflect that it's coming up to his birthday and we're out here celebrating and, you know, it's unfair that he's not with us. Um, so I feel the sentiments of not having it if he feels like we shouldn't have it but you know stay posted it may change all right okay I think I'm gonna stop there I'm pretty sure I've gone way over the time that it's allotted but as usual we appreciate you every single one of you and we encourage you to put it into action practical action not just you know read but practice what you know you're being taught connect with us, join us, um, be, be a part of the community, be, don't just spectate, you know, actually get involved and do something. Um, subscribe to OSM Vision, hit the, the bell for notifications, comment on your question, like your questions, like the channel. I mean, just doing something as simple as that, just sharing, um, liking, that helps us tremendously because, you know, the online experience is all about, you know, numbers in terms of how many people are liking, sharing and subscribing. So you can help us by just doing that. You can help us by transforming yourself with Wusabat and sharing your experience, you know, um, sharing it with our classes, sharing our platforms with other people, um, asking your questions, you know, so even a little donation if you want, that's up to you, it's from the heart, so we can keep doing this work. Um, people keep saying, can you do more, post more, but people don't realise it actually is time consuming because we do have other things we are doing in our lives as well. Um, but we would love to do this full time, every day posting, but it takes time to record. Um, it takes time, you know, to edit. It takes time to, there's a lot of things that come with it, you know. So we actually already posting once every week. We're on the radio every Tuesday. We are teaching classes every Saturday. Um, and in, in between that, we post other videos reacting, reactions to things that are going on. So, you know, we're already doing a lot, but with your support, 
we can do even more. So until the next episode, like, share, subscribe, comment, and most of all, I shook. Peace, love, and unity to all. Wadu. Oh,